Welcome to Business Operations Week 5. This week, we will concentrate on marketing and uh, we will study marketing for a few weeks. So I hope you like this field because it's very interesting and fascinating and I believe you will learn a lot. Businesses face uh, different challenges every day. Some of these challenges uh, is, are reflected directly on the marketing strategy that the company employs. Some of these challenges are getting new clients and we say generating leads. So uh, there is a, a small study that, uh, refle that showed that 51% of the companies who uh, participated in this study rely on customer referrals. And customer referrals is the main source of generating leads and having new clients. This is one of the challenges that face companies. The second one is retaining the current customers. So acquiring new customers is costly and the benefits are not as high as retaining current clients. Because with the current clients, we already um, had the cost of acquiring those clients as new clients and now it's only maintaining and, have, and, and, and having repeat business with the existing clients or existing customers that we have. The third challenge is keeping up with the changing markets. The markets are changing, new ideas uh, are emerging every day, new products, uh, more advanced products, uh, the client base is changing, their behavior is changing, so it's a challenge for businesses to keep up with changing markets. And also, it's a challenge to manage marketing projects and uh, allocate time for these projects. Also, another challenge is hiring, retaining, and training employees, especially those who work in the marketing department. Not only marketing department, but marketing, sales, and business development. Another challenge is having the marketing budget because most of the companies are aiming to lower the, the costs. Uh, and one of the uh, costs that businesses decide to cut is marketing budget. Also, one of the challenges uh, that faces businesses and the marketing department in these businesses is justifying marketing activities based on return on investment. Re remember when we talked about marketing budgets? So, okay, we will pay this amount or we will allocate this budget for the marketing. What is the return on investment that we are getting? So this week, we will learn more about marketing and how marketing can help us face the challenges or some of the challenges that I talked about that face businesses these days. So we will talk about marketing purpose, we will talk about marketing link to strategy, marketing challenges, positioning, segmentation, and, to and target marketing, and value proposition. And by the end of this week, you will be able to describe the purpose of marketing and its connection to business strategy. You will be able to identify the six R's and challenges of marketing, and you will be able to describe the concepts of positioning, market research, segmentation, and targeting in the marketing process. Let's first talk about the marketing purpose. Uh, the marketing as a term didn't appear in the literature, the business liter literature, until late 1800s. And namely, in the year 1910, marketing was added as an English word. Of course, the word market was there way before, and the market was a, a, a solid concept in almost all civilizations, but the word marketing was a new concept. And this is really, really very interesting because uh, having this as a concept and adding it to the business literature uh, is a very interesting fact. Before that, we had commercial advertisement, but the marketing as a concept and as a field was just started to emerge. And it was highly related to sales and how to pitch uh, 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 and, and share certain message to convince the customer or the client to buy the product. The concept marketing started to emerge and widen to include advertisement and sales and much more gradually. 
and they sometimes uh, resemble marketing to an iceberg. What you see above the surface is one tenth of all the activity that's happening under the surface. And many of us, when we uh, hear the, the word marketing, we think of advertisement. But advertisement is one of the end products of a huge process called the marketing process. So the marketing process, we need to uh, know our customers, uh, uh, target them, and have a much bro broader activities um, that, for example, include assessing the market, understanding the dynamics in the market that we operate in, identifying the needs of our customers, and, and, and evaluating the suitability of the solutions that we offer to satisfy these needs, uh, to determine what price to charge, how we will give customers access to the products uh, by having uh, the right distribution channels, how we will deliver a, a propelling communication message that uh, create awareness and also a desire to buy our products or services. In a nutshell, the purpose of the marketing is generating revenue for the brand. And as a marketeer, you will achieve this goal or this purpose is generating revenue for your company or your organization or your business through the execution of some strategic activities and generating leads and these leads transform into sales. So what is marketing? The American Marketing Association define marketing as the activity set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. Marketing is a process. This process enables the organization or the business to design, develop, and communicate the value of the products or the services we offer. It is much more than advertising or media campaign, as I said before. This process involves assessing the, marketing, the market dynamics, identifying needs and solutions, and determining what price to charge. It ensures that customers have access to the product through the development of distribution channels and options and also developing communication messages to create awareness and preference for the products or services that we offer to our existing customers and also to potential new customers. That's why in many cases, sales and marketing align. At the end, sales and marketing share the same purpose. We, whether we work for sales or for marketing departments, we are aiming to generate revenue for the businesses. Our purpose is to drive growth. So while sales are thinking of uh, the, uh, the present, so the right now, the right here situation, marketing is creating the situation, thinking of the future, attracting new clients, retaining existing clients. That's why some scholars uh, uh, refer to marketing, sales, and business development as the revenue team. Why? Because the effort of these three uh, departments or three functions generate revenue to the business. Also, it's very important to understand that um, the marketing purpose is to create brand awareness. So we talked before about the term value. So the value means communicating to existing and potential customers how the business uh, uh, or the products or the services that we are offering will meet their needs or satisfy their needs. Why they should get our offering, not the competitor's offering. Value doesn't always have to be tangible. And value, whether it is real or perceived, can be based on intangible attributes, such as peer acceptance, status, emotional benefits, pride of ownership, or brand loyalty. Let's have a, a solid example to differentiate between tangible and intangible values. Let's talk about Samsung versus Apple. So if you buy, suppose that I bought a new phone last year. I have always been an Android person, but this time I bought an iPhone. 
So in my case, I spent a considerable amount of time researching about the tangible aspects like the screen size, resolution, camera, video functionality, and all other specifications. I got it from a reseller who had all the other brands. I went there a couple of times and what I observed was that those who have been with Apple had the most brand loyalty. Despite the fact that the salesperson was able to factually explain how some other brands like Samsung or Hawaii uh, were superior, some customers were blunt in their response. They said, no, I am an iPhone person, so I will be an iPhone person. And you will find that this brand loyalty to iPhone is at its peak among the teenagers and young adults. So this is called brand loyalty and uh, you will find uh, people who have brand loyalty to uh, an iPhone for example, they are so proud of their ownership of this brand. I'm an iPhone person. Oh no, 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 I cannot use another brand. Let's have another uh, example. The iProfen, it's tablet for pain, uh, a painkiller, uh, produced by Rexel. Uh, people who use iProfen, um, usually, uh, they, they, they don't change. Though the generic composition and potency is 100% similar. And Rexel medicines go through the same license and approvals. But you will find that some people buy uh, the more expensive Tylenol and Advil, for example, and not the other generic brands. Researches show that there is um, a, a degree of psychological or behavior attachment to certain brands. So this is the difference between tangible and intangible value. Tangible, we talk about specifications. Intangible value, we talk about emotions. And there is a market strategy that's called value-based marketing. In value-based marketing, um, we think of what will appeal to our customers, what will match their values and ethics and priorities. So all our marketing activities will focus on creating a connection between our product or service and the customer beyond only the functionality or the interest we will try to create a deeper bond between the brand and the customers. My brand share the same values and priorities of my clients. Now we have a perfect match. Now we will create this brand loyalty that we are trying to create. Two fundamental principles of consumer behavior highlight the importance of value-based approach to understanding the purpose of marketing. The first principle says that customers don't buy products or services. They buy solutions to problems or needs or desires. The second principle states that customers will not pay more for a, for a product if they can get a similar product for less. So the greater our ability to deliver to our customers solutions, products or services to the problems or, or needs or desires, in a way that is interpreted to be a higher quality or has a degree of uniqueness or importance of convenience uh, in comparison to other competitors, we will win those customers. So the perceived difference in value is what truly differentiates a company's pr product or services from its competitors and builds brand loyalty. And now the world is noisy with so many products uh, offering uh, similar solutions uh, and all these products are fighting to get the attention of the same client base or the same customer segment. However, customers are not dumb. No, actually they are so intelligent and they can easily differentiate empty claims and uh, manipulative tactics by, um, done by uh, several businesses. And they are quick to, um, you know, change from product to product or from brand to another brand based on their belief in the claims of the businesses or the promises or the offering of such businesses. So when we have a value-based approach, 
This means that we are actually providing the value. We are building trust with our customers. And only when we have this trust, customers will refer their friends or their family, and uh, we will have the best marketing strategy, which is word of mouth. But really, really to, to enable our brand to stand out and uh, uh, pass the test of time, we have to create loyal and engaged customer base. I want you to think of something. Uh, if you buy gas from a certain station, uh, let's say Costco, Shell, Esso, what are the factors affecting your decision to which brand to go? Uh, are you loyal to this brand or not? Of course, we have um, certain considerations side, like uh, hours of operations, price, quality, but what other factors that will push you to repeat your business with a certain brand. And when we talk about marketing, uh, we cannot think of marketing in isolation from the business strategy. So the business strategy is um, a broad concept that includes the entire business. And the marketing strategies are derived from the business strategy. So if the business strategy is the long-term plan of where we want to go, where the company is heading. What is the big picture? It's like having a top level view of the company. It's like having a blueprint or a map of the whole journey. The marketing strategy will build up on the business strategy, will align with our goals, with the, with, with the objective of the whole business. And marketing is a critical component associated with the successful execution of the business strategy. It's largely perceived as the communications link between the organization and the marketplace. It is responsible for connecting customers to the products or the services that we offer. This means understanding different aspects of marketing that we will call the six R's and respond, responding to six core challenges. So when we have properly positioned products combined with a superior marketing effort, we will have the organizational profitability and growth that we are aiming. However, be careful to differentiate between the marketing strategy and the business strategy. The marketing strategy is a strategy to reach the customers and turn those potential customers into current customers to create a business and referral. So those who say that everyone is a potential audience or a potential customer, they don't understand business, they don't understand marketing. Not everyone in the market is a potential client or customer to our business. Every business has an ideal customer. So when we differentiate between ideal customers and other people in the market, we will be able to target the ideal client or the ideal customer. We will uh, focus our effort and focus our budget and focus our activities on the ideal client. We will never spend time or effort or money trying to convince people who are not our ideal client to buy our products or services. For example, if I am dealing with luxury products, for example, like Prada, like Givenchy, these brands target people with huge disposable income. They can spare big sum of money to spend on a bag or a, a, a garment. And I will tailor my messages and my marketing activities to my ideal client. This way, I will have the maximum return on investment. And here I need to understand my position in the market, my positioning strategy. Am I a low cost provider or premium provider? Am I providing products or services for the mass market or am a niche player? To, to give you an example, for example, Walmart. What is the position of Walmart? Walmart is a low cost provider that target a mass market and have a very good distribution channel or good distribution system. And also my messaging. 
How do I communicate my messages to my ideal client? What's my competitive advantage? What's my value proposition? My language that I use in my marketing messages is coming from my business strategy and feeding my marketing strategy. And also, uh, sometimes the time span of the business strategy is not the same time span of the marketing strategy. So if I create a, a business strategy for five years and I develop my marketing strategy based on my business strategy, I need to think, will this be strategy effective for the five years or I need to uh, uh, renew or adapt my strategy every couple of years? So we can say that the marketing strategy is the business overall plan for reaching prospective customers and turning them into current customers. And this strategy includes the value proposition, the key messages that reflect the values of my brand, uh, all the available data on my target customer or my ideal customers, including its the, the demographics. What is the specifications or attributes of my product? What is the price that I'm offering? Where I will be offering the product or service? And what type of promotions that I will employ? And of course, there are different marketing strategies. But in a nutshell, the marketing strategy should revolve around the company's value proposition. And we will communicate this value proposition through the marketing strategy to our ideal clients or ideal customers. We will show them what the business stands for, how we operate, why we deserve their business. Also, the marketing strategy should include the initiatives that we will have the marketing efforts or activities that will reflect our value proposition. And here we need to differentiate between marketing strategy and marketing plan. We, we can say that the marketing plan is a detailed document that reflects the marketing strategy. The marketing strategy is a high level picture of what we will do, but the marketing plan is a detailed document of what we will do, how we will do it and who will do it, at what cost. And also the marketing plan will include a timetable of all the marketing activities or marketing initiatives or marketing projects that will be included in the plan to actualize the marketing strategy.